Praise Jesus. Just, just want to let you know that after she preaches, we'll be coming back, and before we introduce our next guest, we'll be taking a, we'll be taking an offering for the conference. Amen. I'm so honored to be here, and I'm so honored to be able to speak into your lives this morning. And I just love how God sets us up, right? And so when I was seeking the Lord, when I found out that I was preaching today, I, I began to seek the Lord. Lord, what do you have? And so it's Prophetic Conference 2024. It's Freedom Unleashed. It's time to soar into new beginnings. And which began to begin to go into our new beginnings, God told me, we need new wineskin for the new oil that is about to be in this place. Um, Pastor preached it last night. I was like, whoa, Lord, here we go. Um, uh, it's coming together. We get what you're saying. So Matthew, I'm going to ask you to turn to Matthew 9, 16 to 17. I'm going to be reading in, um, out of the NIV. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Scripture says, no one sews a patch of unshrunk cloth on an old garment, for the patch will pull away from the garment, making the terror worse. Neither do people pour new wine into old wineskins. If they do, the skins will burst, the wine will run out, and the wineskins will be ruined. No, they pour new wine into new wineskins, and both are preserved. You see, in this parable, Jesus was talking about the old and the new um, garments and old and new wineskins. What Jesus was saying is that we can't patch up our old ways, our religious thinking with the new that he wants to do in us, yeah. through us, and around us. You see, when there's a tear in a garment and you put an unshrunk piece of cloth on it, you can sew it up. It's going to work. But as soon as you put it in the washer, let me tell you, that cloth is going to shrink and it's going to pull the old material and it's going to cause tearing all around. So it doesn't work. That's what happens with the anointing. You see, we can't continue to use worn out trans traditions and thinking. We must have a new heart, a new way of thinking. So the Greek words for new and old do not merely denote age, but nature or essence. So let's start looking at the physical process of renewing a wineskin. So once a wineskin has been empty of all the, the old wine, it becomes dry, hard, and brittle. Come on. That's how some people get right. So the wineskin needs to be submerged in water for a period of time. I love how Prophet John just came up here and said that. Because the water is the washing of the water of the word. So when the wineskin gets in, gets it put into that water of the word, it becomes to get soft. It becomes to get pliable. It, it, it comes to get so that you can, the, so God can remold you into what he's doing now. Not in the old, but in the new. See, so then after it gets into submerged in water for a period of time, then it has oil poured onto it and oil is massaged into the leather to renew it and to make it pliable, pliable again. And that oil is the anointing. Because it's the, the anointing that destroys the yoke of bondage. So it's the anointing that is getting rubbed into each and every one of us, into our minds, into our bodies, so that we can take care of what we need to take care of. Nothing hidden that can be uncovered because under the anointing, nothing can be there that God says. So anything that's against God, anything Anything that's not for him or pleases him, displeases him, cannot stand. The oil, the anointing points it out and so that you can begin to take care of it. But you know what? We have a choice. We can say, okay, God, I'm going to surrender to you. I'm going to give you this peace. Or, or, or I can decide, no, I want to keep it. You know, and that's where we're at. Because you see, people want change. But guess what? They don't want to do the work. They don't want to renew their mind. 
They don't want to get into the word. They don't want to get into the presence of God because it takes time. And I'm going to tell you, if whatever, whatever you prioritize in your life, <laughs> that tells you where you're going. That tells you where you're at. That tells you what you're going to get. That Because your blessing comes from there. You know, I, like, like I tell my husband all the time, you make time for what's important for you. No matter what it is, no matter how busy you are, guess what? I'm committed 100% no matter what. So what begins to happen? Your life begins to change because now you're putting God first. Now you're putting what he's calling you to do first instead of those things that we've been doing all day by day by day by day by day. We're not here to live in the natural, let me tell you. We're spiritual people to live in the spirit realm because God wants to use us to declare his word. We're a prophetic church to declare his word and see those things come to pass because we're bringing the kingdom of God and we're releasing it into the earth. But it takes us. It takes you because we can't do it alone. We need you. We need each and every one. So I believe that God is saying um, that so God follows a similar process, okay, when we're doing our wine skin. Once all the wine of the last season, because some people get stuck in the old season, in the old ways, okay? So, so he has to, he's trying to get the wine out of the old season and that has been poured out so that we can enter into a new season of transition. We are entering the process of renewal. And the first thing to do is, in transition, is accept that God is wanting to bring change. We heard it yesterday as a prophetic word. The new wine is a sign of something fresh, something new. God's not stuck in the old. God's always doing a new thing. So it takes a new anointing. It takes a new wineskin to begin to walk in the steps that God is calling us to do. We want to make a difference in the city of Tucson. We want to make a difference in our neighborhood, in our families, in ourselves. It takes us putting God first no matter what. It takes the commitment no matter what. We struggle in the natural. Yes, we go through stuff, but you know what? He's our all in all. All things, all good things come from God. All our provision comes from God no matter what. And I could tell you that God is the one that supplies. He's the one that makes the way. I'm telling you, we need to get our eyes off the natural and into the spiritual. I love that this church is a prophetic church because it's like no other. You see, the other churches, we get stuck in traditions. I know how the service is going to go. I know we're going to come and open up in prayer. We're going to sing three songs, five songs, whatever it is. Is. The offering's going to come. A message is going to be sent. And, you know, the altar call is going to be done. And I get to go home and I'm done. No. We come to service and say, God, I want to meet you there, God. I want and I need an encounter with you, God. There's nothing else but you. Because you know what? Each time you come and you have an encounter with God, you change. God begins to change your mind heart and begins to line up with the word of God and what he's doing, what he's doing in your life. But it takes us to say, yes, God. Yes, God. I've learned to say yes, even when I don't understand what he's doing. Even when I'm like, okay, God, you're telling me, you're calling me to this. But you know what? It doesn't matter because I say yes. My trust is in you, God, no matter what I think, no matter what I feel, no matter what's happening in the natural, my faith is in you. Hallelujah. So the new wine is a sign of something fresh, that the old is passing away. We can't get stuck. We can't get stuck. A new heart is our new wineskin. A renewed mind. Because when you have a renewed mind, your actions begin to change. So that the new wine, the, the new oil for the season that we're in today will, will fill you up afresh and anew to overflowing to where everywhere you're going, it's overflowing onto them. So you're making a difference everywhere you go. That the atmosphere is changing everywhere you go because of what you're carrying. Because you know what? Because in the closet, you know.
no. That's where it comes, in your prayer time, in your one-on-one -on -one time with God. Because so many people get burned out because why? We're doing the work of the ministry. Oh, yeah? Well, your number one ministry is God. It's your relationship. You can't forget that. That's your number one thing that you got to put prioritize in your life. Because without him, we cannot do anything. We have no power without him. The authority and the power that we have comes from the Holy Spirit. Let me tell you. Oh, Jesus, help us. So we need a renewed mind to change our actions because that's what's going to help us. That's going to help us to move forward. God loves where we are, but he wants to continually to take us and make us who we are created to be. Always trying to produce the new wine in our lives. If we would allow him to, God doesn't get stuck. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And let me tell you, he's always doing something new. I am a firm believer that the church will have the answers that the world needs. Because you know what? Yes, I, I totally understand that the church is not in the four walls, okay? I get that. But in the four walls is where you get equipped. In the four walls is when you can begin to learn and to grow, to get into the position God wants you so that you can take it out and go and minister and touch and prophesy into people's lives to pull out the gold, to pull out their identity in them. Come on, because they don't know who they are. They don't know who they are, and that's what they need to do. If we begin to help them with their identity of knowing who they are in Christ, let me tell you, their whole world will change. You know, Scripture says, um, oh, I'm getting ahead of myself, but anyways. Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have I give I to thee. In the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. That's what we need. That's what we need. People, yes, they're struggling. Yes, they need food. Yes, they need clothing. Yes, they need blankets. Yes, they need. But you know what? I was praying, God, how can we make a difference, God? Because we've been talking and saying, what are we going to do? How are we going to minister to them that are out here? What, God? Oh, well, we can do this. We can do that. We can do this. And I'm like, God, what do we do? And he gave me that scripture. Silver and gold have I none. Because one encounter with God will change your life forever. And it doesn't matter how long you've been a Christian. Let me tell you, you need a fresh touch every time you come into the presence of God. And he's willing and he's wanting. He's giving you an invitation. Come, come. I want to pour into you so that you can pour out to others. See, we desire the new, but we don't want to release the old. We got to get rid of the old, our old ways of thinking, our old ways. I love how the, when the church started and um, someone handed Prophet John Emiliana a book of how to start a church. And they began to read it and they began to say, oh, my goodness, we're doing everything wrong. And the Holy Spirit told Prophet John, throw the book away because he said, we're not a normal church. He says, I'm going to lead you because you know what? People are stuck by what people have gotten away in the, in, in the, in, in the past. They're stuck in those ways and they're not working. They're not working. The church is the one that should have power. The church is the one that people should come in and get healed, get delivered, get saved, get everything that they need in the church. Not going to programs. Programs don't work. Why? Because it doesn't touch what's happening in here. It doesn't heal what's happening in their inner, in their inner healing. It doesn't. It doesn't work. That's why they turn back to drugs. Why? They haven't had that encounter that they need with God. Because one encounter, once you know that God is alive, that he's well, that he wants you, that he's inviting you, there's nothing else. You'll never be the same again. That's what people need. That's what we carry. That's what we carry. Oh, Jesus. The new and the old are not meant to be together. 
They are not in agreement. And we cannot abide in the same garment and wineskins. We need to get rid of that stuff no matter what we're stuck in. God, what are you doing? What are you saying new? What are you saying afresh this day? Jesus. Shoot. Honey, did you time me? I don't know where I'm at. All right. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> so the new, the new wine represents something fresh that God wants to do. Also, though, that the old is passing away. We can't put new ideas into old mindset. We can't get new results with old behavior. Okay? Because what, what do we do? We continue to try to fix something. We continue to make something better. But we continue to do the same thing over and over and over and get the same results. Why? Because we need God. God, what are you doing? What are you saying, God? We need a word, a fresh word. Not only the written word, but the spoken word as well. God, what are you telling me? See, so many people are afraid just to get into the presence and say, God, what do you want to tell me today? What do you want to tell me this morning? Let me tell you, we can't teach you how to hear God. What we can do is we can teach you how to be sensitive to what, how he's speaking to you. Because he's speaking to each one of you. We just got to get a hold of, oh, that was God. Oh, that was God. That's what we're here for, to equip you so that you can hear the voice of the Lord for yourself, so that you can speak to those that are hurting, so that you can make a way for them and say, that's not the way, this is the way. See, we are salt being sprinkled, sprinkled all over everywhere we go. You're salt. You're walking. You're sprinkling salt. Why? Because you're making a difference. We're the light. We're the, the living to to impact, the impact is affecting our surroundings. We are everywhere we put our foot to. God said, I'm going to give it to you. Do you believe it? Do you believe it? Because he is. See, we need to love, love people well. And we're, we have to move intentionally to bring about change. Intentionally. That means I'm doing something on purpose. That doesn't mean it's coming natural. It's not natural to me, but I'm intentionally going to make a decision in my mind that this is what I'm going to do. No matter what my mind says, no matter what my body feels, no matter what I'm going through, God, you said it, I believe it, and I'm going to walk in it. Our number one thing, our faith, our, our walk with God is a faith walk. No matter what you're doing, you got to believe that you're hearing so that you can begin to walk in what he's telling you to do and not give up until the end, until the outcome. I love how Prophet Emiliana spoke the other day that um, as God speaks, he's prophetically telling you what's about to happen. He's telling you, uh, he's already seen the outcome, even before the beginning. And guess what? That's where we're going. Even it doesn't matter what we go through. It doesn't matter what's happening in between. We got to keep our eyes on God and say, God, you said this was going to happen, and I'm standing on your word until I see it come to pass. Psalms 34, 8 says, taste and see that the Lord is good. Tasting means you're experiencing him. Seeing is perceiving who he is. We got to understand that God is a good God, that he has the best for your life, that it doesn't matter what we think, what we feel. That is our God. So we got to begin to walk in that. Change your perspective and you can change your reality. Change your perspective. God, how do you see this? How do you see that person? How do you see this situation? Because I want to begin to see it the way you do. For the fresh work God is doing and wants to do, he has to go outside the boundaries of organized religious systems, just like we're doing, thinking patterns, because so many have boxed him into what they want, what they think. Okay, I got to wake up in the morning and pray. Okay, I got to read my word. Okay, I got to do this. I got to do that. No, I love my husband saying, I get to. I get to get up in the morning. I get to read the Bible. I get to because not everybody does. Not everybody does. We got to keep that in mind. 
See, because when we're in the old thinking, if you're getting frustrated, <laughs> you're in the old. Yeah. It causes frustration because you're not getting the results that you should be getting. God, why isn't this working? What is working, God? What do you want me to do? I'll start doing it. Be obedient. You see, when he speaks, it's not a question. It's not a suggestion. It's a command. Yes, God. I've learned to say yes, God. No matter, yes, God. Even I don't, yes, God. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, so I'm just going to ask you just to stand. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And I, ju I, I just know that God is doing a fresh outpouring in each and every one of us of, of great courage giving us understanding. Father, we just thank you, Father God, that we're, that even this weekend, Lord God, that we're birthing a new season, Lord God, in the citadel, and those even that don't belong in the citadel, in their lives, Lord God, that, Father, each and every one of us is turning the page, God. We're so tired of the old, Lord. We need the new, Father God. I thank you that the new season has begun in the citadel, Lord. I thank you for that fresh anointing. I thank you for those fresh ideas, God. I thank you, Father God, that you go before us, Lord God, to make a way, Lord God. I thank you, Father God, that you are giving each and every one of us the courage that we need to step out of the boat, God, and begin to take those walk of faith, Father God, because you're there with us, Lord, that we're not going to sink, Father God, because of your faithfulness. And even if we do, you're there to help us, Lord God. Father, I just thank you right now, Father. I praise you, Lord God. I thank you that there's an impartation of courage right now, Lord God, by your Holy Spirit, Father God, that those people that you are calling to rise up will rise up and take their rightful place, God, no matter what's going on, Father. I just thank you this morning, Lord God, for what you're doing in this place, Lord God. Oh, Father, you're so good, Lord. We love you, Lord God. I thank you that it's not by chance that each one is here this morning, Lord God, to hear this word, Lord. That it's, Father God, by invitation. And, Father, I thank you for that impartation even right now in Jesus' name. Amen. If you, if you, I've caught something that uh, Pastor Veronica said that really ministered to my soul. That the old and the new are not in agreement. And I think sometimes the struggle is we're trying to merge the old and the new. We're not talking about age. We're not talking about culture. We're talking about mindsets. We're, we're talking about the things of the spirit. And because uh, sometimes people misinterpret what Jesus was saying, that we're, we're not merging 70-year-olds with 12-year-olds. No, we're merging generations. We're called to merge generations. We are called to do that. We're multi-generational. That's not what Jesus was talking about. Because... What we were talking about was the fact that merging the old ways, the old ideas of church that was not producing life. Because the church of his day was dead. How many want the new wine? How many want the new wine? Father, we come to you this morning. And we thank you that you are releasing new wine in this church upon the church as a whole. We thank you for the power of the Lord. Charles, if you could just sing prophetically about the new wine. Just sing prophetically. Just worship for a moment. Just worship God for a moment. If you could use anything, Lord, you can use me. 
If you could use anything, Lord, you could use me. Take my hands, Lord, and my feet. Take my heart, Lord, speak through me. If you could use anything, Lord, you could use me. If you could use anything, Lord, you can use me. If you could use anything, Lord, you can use me. Make it your prayer. Take my hands, Lord, and my feet. Take my heart, Lord, speak to me. If you could use anything, Lord, you could use me. Open up my eyes, God. Open up my eyes, God. Go on, give us eyes to see the way you do. Give us ears to hear. Oh. Lord, open up our eyes to see what you see, God. Open up our ears to hear what you hear, God. Just worship him. Oh, God, pull, give us new wine. God, give us new wine. God, give us fresh oil. Lord, give us fresh oil. Lord, release a new wine. Lord, release a new wine. If you could use anything, Lord, you could use me. If you could use anything, Lord, you could use me. Take my hands, Lord, and my feet. Take my heart, Lord, speak to me. If you could use anything, Lord, you could use me. Put your hand on your heart and say this after me. Say this out loud. Jesus. Give me new wineskins. Pour the new wine in my heart. So I can be a vessel for you. So I might glorify your name. That I might change the history of a generation. Use me, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Give God a shout of praise right now. Give God a shout of praise. You may be seated for just a moment. I, and you guys stay up here for a moment. Because what we're going to do right now is before I introduce our next guest, I, we want to we wanna sow into this conference. I have a, I have a goal that I, I want to see reached. So how many want to see... Uh, Prophet Michael, Pastor Steve, blessed. Come on. How many want to, they, they, they would say, I want to come back to Tucson. I mean, I, I, you can't put a price tag on that word last night. I mean, you could give a million dollars and not, there's no amount of money that could. I mean, I have to say this. I, that was the best word I've ever heard Steve Seymour preach in all the years I've known him. I, I, I was weeping. I was weeping last night. And what I know we had a registration fee that doesn't even car carry the cost of the air flights that we flew both of you. That doesn't even take care of the flights. That was just to get a count of who would be coming. There's a hotel and all the expenses. And I want to make sure that they leave the Citadel Church tomorrow afternoon blessed by God. So I want to read a scripture to you. I want to read it out of Psalm 122. Verse 9, in the NIV, 
in the New International Version. Listen to what it, the word of the Lord says. For the sake of the house of the Lord our God. Say this for me. For the sake of the house of the Lord our God. Not my sake, but for God's house. How many love God's house? How many know that we could not gather here if we didn't have a house? We couldn't enjoy these wonderful words, these last two words, if we didn't have a house. And this is the Lord's house. It's not my house. It's the Lord's house. It's not, the, it's not our house. It's God's house. Listen to, what he said. Listen to what the psalmist says. For the sake of the house of the Lord, I will seek your prosperity. Wow. I will seek your prosperity. So, you know, over the years that I've been traveling, uh, you know, I understand that there has been abuses in church. But of what I've seen in my life is that people swing from one pendulum to another. And you hear words like the prosperity gospel. Well, when people badmouth the prosperity gospel, they're in disobedience to this word. For the sake of the, of the house of the Lord, I will seek your prosperity. I want to be prosperous so I can bless God's house. So, so I want everybody in the Citadel Church to start businesses. Not, not, not so that they can drive a Bentley. Nothing wrong with driving a Bentley. But so that they will seek the prosperity because they want to bless God's house. Yeah. 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 Meliana and I live to bless God's house. And, and there, there's a residual with that. When I bless God's house, he blesses my house. I mean, to have my son stand behind me, that you can't put a pet price tag on that. You can't put up and, 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 and sing because I can't sing. And I know mom can't sing. How, did he, how does that happen? How does that happen? It's the blessing of God. He has a wonderful marriage. He's got three wonderful kids. And if they were all three in the front row, and if I handed the mic and told them to prophesy, they'd all prophesy. They wouldn't even hesitate. Especially Ezekiel, he'd just get up and start prophesying. How does that happen? That's why I want to sow into God's house. That's why I want to be prosperous. That's why I want millions of dollars, not for the sake of John Harkey's house, but for the sake of the house of the Lord. Right? And, and, to not, and, to not, and to not want to prosper is to be in direct disobedience to the will of God because, because it, takes, it takes wealth, it takes prosperity to bless this house. I was praying for a million dollars today. Well, I was telling Charles I, on the way over here, I said, I need a million dollars for this property. And that, that, that's a lot of money. And you know what? God's going to prosper me. For the sake of his house. Guess what? This will be the most beautiful building in this neighborhood. Why does that school got to look nicer than this house? Why does it have to look nicer? It's because the people of God did not seek God's prosperity. You seek it out. God, prosper me so I can give. Prosper me so I can be a blessing. The primary key to prosperity is not necessarily just starting businesses, although I want everybody to start a business. It's giving. It's giving. It's adding zeros when you can't afford to because you seek God's prosperity. I'm going to make it. By the grace of God, I'm going to make it in one year, Miliana. I gave over $100,000 last year to the work of the Lord. 
And there's going to be a day when I'm going to give a million dollars in one year to the work of the Lord. For the, not for the sake of my house, but for the sake of his house. Here's what I want you to do. I want everybody to participate in this offering. Because I want to bless these two gentlemen really good. I already gave Charles his offering, you know. <laughs> and, and he did a tremendous job. And if you could put that on the screen there, there's a, there's a way to give online. You got the text to give, got scan or in person. If you need an envelope, raise your hand and one of our ushers will come, Brother Ricky, or will come up. And here's what I want to do this morning. I want everyone to hold your offering, I'll give you a moment. I have my ushers come all the way up to the front. We're going to do something a little differently this morning. If you don't have an offering... Here's what I want you to do. Walk up to this beautiful woman sitting on the front row. She has a lot of money. Come on. <laughs> and borrow it from her and tell her I'll pay you back in the millennial. Come on. <laughs> but here's ushers. If you could stand, Ricky and Miguel, could you stand on my left or on my right? I want you to hold your baskets up. You know what? I want everybody to stand. I want everybody to stand. What we're going to do is we're going to, I'm going to, how many believe God wants to prosper you. How many believe God wants to prosper you? You know what I would like to see? I'd like to see Vanessa Acosta own three apartment complexes. I think she could manage all those apartment complexes in her sleep. She sat out there for, for five days out in the sun managing the whole fireworks sale. Absolutely amazing. She has that kind of gifting. That'd be awesome. Can you imagine her tie that she owned three com com apartment complexes at $1,000 a month? I say, please keep coming to the Citadel. Come on. <laughs> For the sake of the house of the Lord, I will seek your prosperity. Here's what I want you to do. I'm going to pray, and then I want you to come up, and I want you to, your phone or your, or your, or your check or your, your money, and come drop it in the offering. Go back to see, remain standing, because Charles and MC are going to sing, and then I'm going to introduce our next guest. Let me pray for your, Father, we, hold up your offering, hold up your offering. Father, we thank you. We thank you for that word. We thank you for the word we just heard about new wineskins. Father, it's going to take a new wineskin, a new mindset to prosper, oh God. That our prosperity is not determined by who gets elected in November. That our prosperity is determined by our obedience to your words and your principles. And Father, for the sake of your house, we in this, under this house today, seek your prosperity. Bless your people coming and bless them going. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Come up and bring your offering. Go, remain, go back to your seat. Remain standing. The worship team is going to sing. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for. To be overcome by your presence, Lord, Holy Spirit, you are Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for. 
to be overcome by your presence, Lord. I want you to remain standing because I'm going to introduce our next guest. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, gentlemen. I am. Um, when Pastor Steve called me and and uh, explained to me that Pastor Lori had double booked and had some had some other responsibilities. Obviously, we'd love to have Lori here, but I was so glad when he told me that uh, our next guest was coming because there's a real strong prophetic anointing on his life. I mean, very very strong. But also, he's a businessman and very successful. He is. He's very, very successful businessman who's, who's also been very successful in the marketplace. And I know that him and his wife are a blessing to Pastor Steve and Lori and that whole spiritual family there in Bakersfield and Shafter. And I, I'm gonna. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to give a wet, warm welcome to Prophet Michael Sanchez as he comes and ministers the word. Come on. Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. <laughs> Just like how you guys are standing, I want to do something. Uh, Charles, if you could play something. Uh, I know the word that was just right now, release. Uh, I just feel in my spirit that we need to give more. We need to give more. We, we, I know we came with a broken heart, and we, and, and we need something. We came for, for a reason, for a purpose today to this conference because, God, I need answers. I need something, Lord. I've been hearing the words that have been released. I thank you, Lord, but I need something in my heart, Lord. I'm, I'm just, I don't know, Lord, what to do next. Just lift up your hands and praise them. Because like it says right here, unleash, unleash, unleash. You need to unleash. Unleash, church, unleash. If you have never, never reached to a, a, a certain level that, that God is, wants to take you, wants to uh, upgrade you, go. Go release what you have. Don't worry. Don't worry. Because worrying is going to stop you from what God has for you. Oh, Rabasanda, Rabasiki, Rabasa. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, yes, Lord Jesus, Jesus. Oh, don't be nervous. This is your time. This is your time. This is your day. This is your time to receive for what God you've been praying for, for your family. For everything, finances, job, whatever you've been praying for. Oh, Rabasanda, Rabasi. That song, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, Rabasanda, Rabasi, Kirabasa. Oh, yes, Lord Jesus. Oh, yes, Lord Jesus. Tell them, church, tell them. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, Lord Jesus. Oh, yes, Lord Jesus. Oh, Rabasanda, Oh, give them your everything. Give them your everything, church. Give them your everything. I wouldn't drive from my house to the church just to get whatever little piece. We're in his presence. The Lord is here. There's no limits. No limits. Oh, Rabasanda Rabasa. Oh, Rabasanda Rabasa. We are his special creation. The angels never were able, they know about the blood, but they have never been touched with the blood. And they're still saying, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. But us, We've been touched with his blood. We carry his DNA. Why hold back? Why hold back? Yes, Lord. Tell them, 
church. Oh, reach, reach. nothing reach he's there I can feel his spirit he's moving every aisle oh rabasa and rabasa he's just waiting for you he's just standing next to you he's saying I know what you're going through I know I know you think I don't know I know I know I know what brings you joy. I know. I know you're tired. I know. I know it all. I know even the things that you have even shared to your spouse, to your family. I know. I am here. I am here, says the Lord. Oh, Rabasa and Rabasi. Oh, don't stop. Don't stop. Because I don't think that if the Lord would come in that door, you would not even stop. And in heaven, when you get to heaven, I bet you will not even stop. Because you've been waiting for this time. Why not bring heaven down? Oh, Rabasanda Rabasi. Oh, Rabasanda Rabasi. Oh, yes, Lord Jesus. Oh, we thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. You know what the Lord was telling me? He, he, he was telling me that our hearts are broken. Are broken. And it's needed to, like the oil, it is needed to restore. It is needed. Because, you know, we could come to a new season. But if our hearts is not in the same way, the new season will be in the same position. If you're, if you're in the new season, I think in my new season, I, I should be worshiping like this. I should be worshiping like that. Because it's greater. It's greater than new season. Don't, don't, don't tell God, God, I feel like it's the same. No. God is saying, no, I think you're the same. You're the same. Because I, I know what I'm doing. I didn't bring that, that, that boat, Noah, and just station it right here. <laughs> I just didn't bring it just like that because I'm doing a new season. I know what you went through. I know how you push. And you just fill the bank of heaven. You don't know how much you have deposit. Even though, it, even though it doesn't feel, but in the, words, in the word God says that whatever you do in private will show publicly. If this is showing, it's because you're doing something. You're doing something. There's more that is going to be showing. There's more. But you need to stop being afraid because that's what the enemy does. He, he puts a whisper. Don't do it today. You know you're going to look. A little bit dumb. But it is not. It is not. He doesn't want to look like that. He doesn't want people to know what God is doing. He doesn't want you to upgrade or, or to, to promote where God wants to take you. He doesn't want to. He wants to stop you. He wants to steal your voice. Because your voice, it's his voice. In his breath, it's in your lungs. 
Who, whose breath do you have in your lungs right now? Whose breath? It's his breath. So if, if it's his breath, I won't stay quiet. I won't stay quiet. I want to do the, the best that I can. I know I have, I have my family over there. I know I, I, I know I have so many things in, in my mind that, that, that I got to do this, I got to do that. Hey, you want to know something? Today's payroll in my company, and I'm like, hopefully they don't mess up. Hopefully they don't, their checks up. They don't put uh, more money than they shouldn't be putting. But since this is breath, why should I worry? Why should I worry? I should be shouting, and I should be, Lord, I know you're going to take care of that. I know you're going to take care of my family. I know you're going to take care of whatever you know my mind, I have in my mind. Why should I worry? Every day that I wake up, it's his breath, so I have to praise him. Like I said, the angels don't have the same privilege as us. They're here to work for us. They work for us. They're powerful, everything, but they, they work for us. But there's something about the, our voice that comes with his breath, his DNA, that it moves mountains, that it opens seas, that, that, that it does so many things in our life that keeps us standing, that keeps us ha uh, in our mind have hope. It's like, Lord, I need this. And then here you get a call. Lord, was that you? <laughs> you just answered. And, and it, just, it just took for you to, to say, Lord, you know, I worry so much. But, Lord, before I worry more, I bring it to you. I turn my worry into prayer. I turn my worry into you, Lord Jesus. I don't know what you're going to do. Yeah. I don't know how we're going to extend this building. I don't know, Lord. I don't know how we're going to bring the people around, Lord. I see them, but I don't know, Lord. You're going to do it. You're going to do it. Because it is your breath that it's in me. And you're going to give me ideas. You're going to give me everything. Because this is your vessel, Lord Jesus. This is a year that I'm not going to look back. This is a year that I'm not going to bring uh, the past. This is the year that I'm going to dig, dig, and dig. And when people say, what are you doing? Why are you digging? And you have this holy shovel. And you're digging and digging. And you're going to tell them, you know what? Because where God is taking me, I can't take this. So I'm burying this thing. I'm burying it because I, I can't take it with me. I don't know what's going on, but I feel a fire. I don't know what's going on, but I feel a hunger. I don't know what's going on, but Lord, I just lean into you. Because I don't know what's going on, Lord. I just don't know. Lord, I, I want to cook. I want to go wash the car. But Lord, I just feel my spirit that I, I just want to go pray. I just want to go pray. I don't know what you're doing, Lord. I just don't know what you're doing. I don't get to see it, Lord. But, Lord, there's something that you're bringing in my life. That's why you're putting this hunger. That's why you're doing what you're doing. I know we don't have the answers, but he does. He does. He does. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hmm. Yes, Lord Jesus, Jesus. I, I, I really don't know. I just feel the, the spirit of the Lord so strong, yeah. so strong. Yeah. Yeah. That I just. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yes, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord Jesus. You see what God does? It is easy to do it here because we're with everyone. And God gives us that discernment. For people in these prayer, and, and we pray, but what are you doing at your house? Are you equipping yourself? Are, are you feeding yourself with his word? What are you doing at your house? Pastors can't see, 
But the Lord could see. He knows why you feel the way you feel. Pastors, God may give them the, the revelation. He may give them uh, something, but, but the Lord knows better. And he knows that, that, hey, you can't hide. We know that. We know that we can't hide. So I got thirsty. <laughs> Man, I, I just, I'm, you know, I feel the, the spirit that he's doing something. Yeah. I feel, I feel, I feel, prophet, that there's a, a, a new, a new spirit, like a new, it's, it's thicker, it's, it's greater. Um, it's just, it just, it's different what, what, what's going on in, the, in this place. Uh, what, oh, from my throat, oh. Oh, I feel like I'm upgrading now. <laughs> um, but I just feel like God God has been preparing, preparing, preparing for this citadel. He's been preparing. Um, and you guys have been part of it. And and, and it's not going to stay just in this building. Um, it's not going to stay. Um, yesterday when Pastor was preaching, the Lord just told me that there's there's a purpose why there's three pastors. <laughs> one is going to stay right here. The other one's going to stay in the other one. And I feel in my spirit that another one is going to go to Phoenix as well. I don't know why that's what the Lord was telling me yesterday. He was like, no, there's going to be more churches opening. And the churches are not going to look like other churches. They're, they're going to they're, they're gonna be brighter. They're, they're going to be like so... With oil, oil, they're gonna be so attractive. They're, they're, they're gonna be like like this light. People, even even the Lord was telling me that that there's gonna be a bilingual church. I don't know how that's gonna happen, but there's gonna be a bilingual church because there's people that speak Spanish that they come across and, and they're like, if only they speak Spanish. And if don't only they speak Spanish. So I, I don't know about that. I, le I, I just release it here, and, and the Lord is gonna is gonna do the rest. But I, I do feel that that there's a preparation that uh, Pastor God is that there's another church, same here, brother. Uh, it's gonna be opening another church and another location. God is gonna do because you did so much work, Prophet. You guys did so much work. Oh, you did so much work. And you don't know how much, how much you have pleased the Lord. You don't know how much. Sometimes we say, Lord, am I really doing it? Am I really doing it, Lord? So that's why the Lord is doing what he's doing. And there's greater Greater things that he's going to be doing. I even see uh, worship right here, uh, instruments, uh, not in this church, in the other church. I'm already prophesying, like, it's going to happen, and next year it's going to happen. I'm already um, prophesying it. it, it it's going to be so amazing that how King's Chapel, Citadel's Chapel. <laughs> I see like how our church, I see a fire. I see young people that are going to be leading worship. I see, I see every, every person being involved in ministry that there was, there's not going to be so much worry about well, how we're going to do this, how we're going to do that. Even, even there's going to be people that you're gonna, you, you see them sitting down and, 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 and you're like, I don't even know if they're going to move on. I don't even know if they're going to be used. I, God is about to do uh, 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 something in their spirit that there's going to be this hunger in, in, in their spirit that they're going to be lifting their hands. They're going to even be here in the altar praising the Lord. There's going to be this hunger, this hunger that I don't know how it's going to come, but there's going to be this hunger that your spirit, your heart is just going to be one more, one more, one more, because we are in this season, in that season that even though the enemy has tried to do so many things, that stop and, and, and take other kids to another direction, uh, people to another direction, and, and wh whoever he gets to the hold to another direction, because he knows that the more the Lord gathers, 
the more that people realize what God has and the, the blessing, uh, the enemy is going to lose so much ground. So much ground. He knows he's losing. He's losing. He knows. He don't want you to be, to you to activate. He don't want you. He wants you to worry. He wants you to worry. He wants you to stop him. He does. He does. You know, uh, he gave me Philippians uh, chapter 4. If we could turn there. I know it's a, it's a really um, popular um, verse. But what benefit is it that it's popular when you don't have it in your heart? Well, what's the purpose if you don't walk in it? <laughs> Every, everything like how Ezekiel will say, um, the Lord told Ezekiel, son of man, let all my words sink deep into your own heart first. Listen to them carefully for yourself. I pray, my prayer is that this conference, whatever is being spoken, that the Lord releases through everyone. That will sink in into your heart. Amen. That will root in your heart, in your in your mind, in your spirit. That will sink in, like never before. Cause we need that. We really need to walk in His word. It's the times that we need to walk in His words. So in Philippians uh, chapter four, verse six says, "Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything." Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Then you will experience God's peace. See, it's already giving you a recipe. <laughs> it's already telling you what to do. But then right now it's like, oh, it just dawned on me. Well, yeah, it's because maybe you haven't read the word. <laughs> We're in the times, and, and I don't know if I should apologize, but... Uh, I, I think I, I want to speak boldly because that's what the Lord is, is putting in my heart. Sometimes we don't read the word and how we don't even know how to walk. You think it's enough just to come and worship and hear someone else's uh, word that the Lord gives them? Yeah, it's, it's going to help you. But then after that, uh, the next day, you, you're not practicing. You're like, yes, it's a good word. It's a good word. It's a, you know that word touched me. But what are you doing the next day? Like, like, like I said, that's why you worry. And it's a, this is a recipe that is telling you, it's telling you pray for everything. Yeah. Tell them, even if it's a little thing, Lord, I don't, I don't have $5 for, for, I don't know how, if it's expensive right here. Um, California is really high. $5 won't, won't do nothing. Um, <laughs> but McDonald's, I, $5, because I, I want to buy McDonald's. Even that God is going gonna, to gonna answer. Because you know what? The enemy could use that. He could put in your in your thoughts and whisper, God is not giving me $5. And what happens? God, I don't even know if I'm reaching to you. I don't know if I'm praying right. Oh, that he loves that. He loves that when you say that. Oh, I don't know if I'm preaching right. He's already putting things in your mind. He's already playing with your mind. He, he, he's he's having fun in your mind, but but when you but but when you stop and say, Lord, I know you're hearing me because I got your breath in my lungs. I know you're answering. You have gave me that strength. You have blessed me. You know what? I have a job, and you know what? You have given me that strength for that job. You know that paycheck, everything. You have gave it to me. So God always answers. Don't worry. Don't worry, because that's going to destroy, that's going to cut you from getting closer to God. Um, that's like how uh, Apostle uh, Paul says, uh, he's advising to pray. Um, do, do you want more worry? Um, do you want to worry less? Um, then pray more. Whenever you start to worry, stop pray. Start, stop and pray. Also, take time to listen to what God has to say to you. Because a lot of times, we just want to make a lot of noise. <laughs> and then the Spirit says, how can I lead you? How can I teach you to pray? How? 
Because you're like, God, help me in this place. God, help me this and that. And your mind is going and it's going and it's going. And the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is like, how can I teach you? How? I want to help you. But how? You're not even stopping. And then, God, you know uh, this God thing, I don't, I don't, I don't even know. I don't, I, he's not. He's not. But let him pray. Be patient. Pray and let him speak back. Let him. I don't think he won't speak. Uh, he will leave. I don't think he will leave you uh, just hanging there. Because I know that he loves you. If his breath in, is in your lungs, I don't think he'll waste it. I don't think he'll waste it. And, and but before having a vi vision, you must start by renewing your mind with the word of God. It, it is time to change, renew, and be different by doing so you will feel that you will accelerate things that were overdue. And you know what? That, that's, that's what the Lord has been telling me. The Lord has been telling me that there was even delays and prophetic words. There was delays of doors that have not opened. But the reason is because we uh, have stopped of seeking the way that we were doing it in the past. So the Lord, uh, what he's saying and that he was telling me, it was that church, he's about to bring all the stuff that it, 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 it didn't open uh, last year, it didn't open in the beginning of the year, he said, because now you guys have landed. Because, you know, in the process, when you're in the process, you forget about everything. Because you're trying, you're trying to, 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 to make it. You're trying to make it. But the Lord says, you made it. You made it, and, and I'm going to bring all the stuff that has been delayed. All the stuff that the, he robbed you, I'm going to bring it. And not only that, you're going to see the green grass. He said, he's, he's going to give you whatever you've been praying. He also uh, uh, said, and, and you know what, it's funny that, Sister, uh, Pastor, you, you brought about the oil. Because this is what he told me. You've been performing with the same oil. Yes, you've been moving with the oil you've been carrying. But it is time to change the filters. It is time to change the oil. It is time to place the wineskin with the new one. Because the new wine, the new oil, the, the, the Lord is about to pour. And you will activate you in a way that you have never been activated. That not only your old prophecy will be waking up, but the new will be also waking up. That's what the Lord was telling me. Because the Lord has took you to the high and he's saying, I'm going to do it again. I'm going to do it again. If you thought that whatever he did in the last season, he's not able to do it, he's going to do it again. But he's going to do it in a different way. If he did it with Abraham, he did it with Moses. He did it with all those speed, all those prophets, and they were growing. They were getting older. They were they were growing and growing and growing. And he did it again. He did it again. His altar, his his covenant, because his covenant never ends. His covenant is always with us. He will do it again. And that's what the Lord said. Um, even though the devil has said, you know what, the the Lord took you. To, to the valley. But you know what? Tell the devil, you know what? His spirit took me to the valley because there's a reason why he took me to the valley. He wants to promote me. He wants to work in me. He wants to do something new in me. But you don't even know what I'm going to do after I come out that valley because it is his spirit that took me there. Not you. It is his spirit that took me in there. So church, that's what I'm saying. The church, wake up. Start waking up. Wake up. Let that hunger. Don't stop. If, he, if the Lord puts that in your heart, go to your room. Do what you got to do. Listen and obey to him. You don't, you don't have to do it by yourself. You don't. I know we're wise people. I think. <laughs> but without him. Without him. I know how to write. But with him, he will bring a different message. God is greater than anything. He is greater. So another thing that he told me. 
he said, I'm the one that use small people for big things. And what the Lord told me, it was that he used you guys over there for this big thing. There's a bigger, I see a vision of a bigger building. And it's not even yet there, but I already see where it's going to be positioned. I already see where, where the doors, the entrance. I already see the colors. And well, that's what the Lord is saying. You may think, you may think, no, but how is he going to use me? I'm just small. I don't have the power of the governors or whatever. But like I, like I says, it's time to soar into a new beginning. You got to know your identity. You got to know. And then your identity, uh, um, David, he knew his identity. He was anointed. You know the things about the kings back in the day, the, the ones that would only last longer, it was the anointed ones. Church, you are anointed. You are anointed. So David, David, he went to Goliath. He knocked that sucker and cut his, his neck. But he did a big thing. He was a king. He was a, a, a man of God, chasing God's heart. Church, you got more to do. There's more that God wants to give you. There's more that you're going to be reaching. And in, in those chairs that are empty, they're going to be filled. And you're going to be like, what are we going to do? How, where are we going to put chairs? Well, how are we going to do this? How? Don't see the picture right now. Don't see right now. Ask yourself, what big thing can I do? What big thing? I want to share this story. But before that. You know, last year, last year I was here, and my mom, uh, I, you guys knew about it. I don't know if you guys knew that my mom was in the hospital. Uh, she was not even responding. She, it was three months already, uh, and she was not responding. Uh, she, she was in coma. And I had barely came, uh, this started in August the 8th, and I had barely came from Mexico, uh, a mission trip. And, um, and I see miracles, uh, miracles. And, and, I, and, I, and I came, and then my mom, she landed in the hospital. She, she got a septic shock, and um, everything started shutting down. Uh, she was not able to move. She had the, the ventilator. She, she was loaded with everything. And, and then um, I was telling God, God, why, God? Why? I just came from Mexico. You delivered so many people. You healed so many people. God, why can't you do my mom? Why? There was, it was a process. It, it, it was all the way to November, almost December, without hearing my mom's voice, without seeing my mom open her eyes. Doctors, they wanted to give up. Well, they gave up. Nurses. Gave up to us well. But you know what, God, even in the little things as I'm sharing it, even in the little things, like how Pastor brought that word, but, but God moments. Um, there was travel, travel nurses, and they were giving us hope. There was nurses that, that would tell us, oh, this is nothing. Your mom's going to make it. But we were like, how? She's not even moving. She's not even nothing. There was people that even, um, I forgot those pastors that, that are in the, in the, in the hospital's uh, chaplains. Um, they were even telling me, I don't even know if they were really pastors or they were working for the hospital because they were, they were telling me, no, you know, your mom is suffering. I was like, what? And you're a pastor? Come on. <laughs> so, so they were talking to, to my, my, my brothers. We, it's only three of us, my older, myself, and my younger sister. And they were talking to, to, to my brothers, and, and then they came to me. All my brothers, they were already um, saying that, no, we got to let my mom go because she's suffering. She's this. She's that. And, and, and me, God was showing me visions. God was showing me dreams. I would see angels next to my mom. I would see so many things. And even though um, I was like, God, but how come you're not answering? 
I was the, I, I was almost close. But my wife, she she did a little bit, but but I was like, God, are you really hearing me? But then I remember about Mexico, and I would get activated again. Lord, I know you're gonna do it. And then I would call my pastors, and they were they were there. And I know they had shared to to other uh, friends. I, I know they shared to you guys. Um, and 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 I know you guys were praying. But I was like, God, are you gonna show up? Are you gonna show up, Lord? I I I I have faith in you. I don't know where to go, Lord. You have done everything in my life. I was a drug addict. You have done everything in my life. Where am I going to go? I know that the devil doesn't have nothing for me. Where am I going to go? Yeah. It is your breath in me. Why am I going to betray you? Why? Yeah. So I was like, God, please, God, God. In my birthday, in August the 21st, I went all fired up to, to, to a hospital. I was like, I know, God, you're going to do something. Nothing. I was like, man, God, what are you doing? I don't understand. I don't. I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know. God. Then this this pastor, the the, the hospital pastors, they came to me, and and they told me, "What do you think, Michael?" I was like, "You know, I think we're gonna miss something if we do that option." Because I was, even though I was hesitating a little bit, you know, we all get in that moment. We all. Is it really gonna happen? Well, I was hesitating a little bit. I was already getting to my last string, my last drop. I was like, God, I don't know what to do no more. So then he said, you know, you're like Isaac. Like, like Jacob. He said, you're like Jacob. You're fighting with the angel. You want your blessing. You want your blessing. And I told him, you know what? I do want it. <laughs> you know, I was the only one standing from my family. Everyone wanted to already disconnect my mom. I was the only one. And, and I said, I know I am small. But this small kid right here, this, oh, man, I made myself look <laughs> young, sound young. But this small guy right here did a miracle. God, through my parents, a miracle. My mom, now she's going to come back on Monday. She's going to come to my house. She doesn't even know, but she's already in the facility. But on Monday, I got this surprise for her. I got this surprise that she's going to come to my house. And she's been attending to, our, to Jesus Save. She speaks a little bit of English, but she's attending and she's worshiping. And not only that, she's already standing and worshiping when there's worshiping. <laughs> so church, church. You don't think God could do it in your life? The Lord is saying, I'm going to do it again. Just ask me. The Lord says, ask me. Ask me. So this is what I want to share. The story, maybe some, some of you guys would know the story already. This is about a professor in England in 1940 who took his student student in the field trip to a famous religious historical site. One of the stops was to a rectory where reformer John Wesley had lived. The tour of the house ended in the bed bedroom where the student noticed that besides the bed were two worn spots in the carpet where John Wesley who led a great revival in England. And then and in the United States had knelt, in the United States, he had knelt for hours in prayer. The sight of those two worn spots had a profound effect on the student who stood in silence before they left to get onto the bus. Once the bus was about to move, the professor realized there was one missing. He went back into the, the rectory and found the student kneeling in the place Wesley knelt, frequently, frequently praying. The kid was saying, do it again. Lord, Lord, do it again. Will you do it again? And will you do it again with me? The professor touched the young man in the shoulder 
and indicated it was time to go. With that, it was Billy Graham. Stood up and joined the rest of the students on the bus. And as you guys know, his story, his background, he, he did a great revival. A great revival. But the Lord, when he gave me this story, he said, I want more people to ask you to do it again. I, I blessed him with the church. And I'm, I have more to do. But what he showed me, I seen the door, and I share this to my pastor. I seen the door of the ark coming down. And then there was, a build, there was a building of an altar. Then from there, this word, I was like, Lord, why? Why this word? He said, because there's going to be a process. That there's going to be about thinking, about how we're going to do this, how we're going to do that. But I am equipping right now. I'm equipping and I'm letting them know not to worry, not to put this in their mind too much. I want them to pray because I know there's going to be some things that are going to be impossible, but they don't have to worry because the impossible is going to be my part right there. I'm just going to guide them, but I want them to not to worry, not to worry what's going to happen or how or when it's going to be this happening. I want them to come in me and rejoice in me and pray because this church, they've been some people in this church. I don't know where the spots are, but there's some spots that are worn out in this place. You thought that you came to a church, that it was a, a bounded church, but this church has been water in the past for you, says the Lord. This church, there has been people that have been praying, Lord, our season is already done, and they already have been, they're in heaven, but they're like this new people, this new church that are coming, they're going to be laying in those spots. They're going to activate whatever that seed, it, it was right here dropped, says the Lord. They are even happy. They're even excited. Those people that know that you guys are here and you guys are activating this church. The Lord says, my people, my people, I want to do it again. I want to do it again. But ask me, I want you to ask me deep, deep from your heart, Lord, do it again. Do it again. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. We just thank you, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord Jesus. Do it again, Lord Jesus. Do it again, Lord. Do it again. Tell them, church, do it again. Do it again in us, church. Do it in the citadel, Lord Jesus. Do it again, Lord Jesus. Lord, do it again, Lord. We just thank you, Lord Jesus. We just praise you, Lord Jesus. A new wind in this church, Father God. A new oil, Lord Jesus, Lord. We just pray, Father, Lord Jesus, that this word, Lord Jesus, would just go in their hearts, Father, Lord, in their minds, and that, to, that, to, that to tomorrow they will be reminded, Lord Jesus, of what you have spoken to your people, Lord Jesus, what you have spoken, Lord Jesus. Father, activate, Lord Jesus. Activate. And lastly, remember, you are only strong as you are honest. You are only strong as you are honest. God has made it very clear. I can only get stronger by admitting my weakness. Dropping my pride and asking for help. Church, God is with you. Like, really. I say this a lot. Snap out of it. God is with you. Don't hesitate to pray. Don't hesitate to get to in his presence. Don't hesitate. This may sound like, but this is what really is getting to you. Don't hesitate to get close to him. We just love you, Lord, and we thank you. Thank you. No, I just I just feel his spirit right here. 
you know how your heart is. Just how I, I share. Be real to yourself. You want to be elevated? Be real to yourself. I know, he knows that you've been hurt. He knows. I don't really need to pray for you. Just by you coming, that's enough. He's already here. He's already here. And I just want to, those that are hurting, those that are saying, Lord, I want more. I want more. The altars are open. They are open. Don't be shy. Don't be nervous. Because I don't think churches are built for that. Churches are, are, are built for you to come and feed yourself and be restored, be renewed. Those are what churches are. Especially when the spirit of the Lord is here. I don't think he's here to, to make, I don't know, fool. That's what the enemy wants. But this is your time, church. This is your time. Yes, we heard the word saying that, that it's a new season. But what if, what if you need to do one more step for that new season? to hit in your life. What if is that? Don't miss it, church. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. Oh, It is open. It is open. It is open. I know the spirit of the Lord is speaking. Don't hold back. It's your time. It's your time. It is your time. It is your time. He's already putting that hunger in you. He's putting that hunger in you. Don't turn to the other side. Don't move to your phone when the presence is telling you, come, come, come. Yes, Lord Jesus, Jesus. Touch Holy Spirit. Touch Holy Spirit. Oh, I could feel his presence. Oh, Even the little things that has been tormenting you, God is calling you to. Even that pain. Even that pain. You woke up today with a headache. You woke up today with that pain in your shoulder, in your hip. And it's like, I don't know if I slept wrong. Right here is your miracle. Right here. Father, let it rain. Let it rain. And I give myself away I give myself away So you can use me I give myself away Yes, Lord I give myself away so you be honest, can be honest. Me. Give yourself away. I give myself away. Oh, yes, Lord, Jesus. Lord, I give myself yes, away. So you can use me. Oh, I give myself away. I give myself away so you can use me. I give myself away. Lord, I give my
myself away so you can use me. I give myself away. Lord, I give myself away so you can use me. Oh, I give myself away so you can use me. I give myself away so you can use me. I give myself away so you can use me. I give myself away. So you can use me. Prophet Michael said something that uh, could probably carry you the rest of your life. When he talked about honesty. I want you to put your hand on your heart all over the room, please. Without honesty, we cannot accomplish what God wants us to do. We can't live a double life. We can't. There has to be honesty inside the soul. Father, I right now, Lord Jesus, pour the oil of truth in our soul. Remove every lie, oh God. Everything that is out of order according to your word so that we can experience that peace that passes understanding that will guard our heart and our mind in Christ Jesus. That right now in this room as the angelic hosts are in this room right now Pour the oil of truth inside of us. That we would become a people that are transparent and vulnerable in our weakness so that we can experience your healing. Even as you, so freedom can be unleashed. There is no freedom when there's a lie. In the name of Jesus. I want everybody to say this. Jesus. Jesus. Say this out loud. Jesus. Jesus. Search my heart. Search my soul. Show me, oh God. If there's anything unclean in me. That doesn't fully represent you. Expose it, Lord. Not, more, not for my shame. Not for my embarrassment. But for my promotion. In the name of Jesus. Now lift your hands and thank him all over the house. Thank him all over the house. God, we thank you. God, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can we give God a shout of praise? Right now, can we give God a shout of praise? Can we thank Prophet Michael? What an amazing word. Come on. You may be seated. Thank you, Charles and Nimsy. I want to just let you know we've gone a little over, but that's okay. 
it's okay because because I, I understand something. I understand um, the more we immerse ourselves in the presence of God and the more we immerse ourselves in truth, we're able to accomplish a lot more. People immerse themselves with their entertainment. They immerse themselves with their pleasures. They immerse themselves with their sexuality. But what happens is they don't immerse themselves in presence and in the word. And then the mind does not get renewed. The more we, uh, my pastor Morocco used to say, I'm going to get pickled. You know, <laughs> I'm the cucumber that's going to get pickled, you know. And we're, and this is what happens where we, uh, I, I call, I mean, we, my, my wife and I, uh, we could have said, hey, we're going to take a few days off and rest, but I want to get the church pickled. Come on. <laughs> In the presence of God, you, because how many know the cucumber turns into a pickle? Because it immersed itself. And when we immerse ourselves, we get changed. And that's why it's so tragic. It's so tragic that people would have church just once, one day a week. You know, how can you? How can you be transformed by an hour a day or an hour a week or whatever? And you get you immersed in the presence of God. But you know what? We have another speaker. And I, I, I want to I let you know before we introduce our speaker, let me just tell you something, a little bit of history. I met him in 1998, a long time ago. What, what's that? Do my math. It's 24 years ago, something like that. And I, I went to his parents' church in Gardena, California. And uh, God opened the door for that. And they... They have been, their family has been nothing but a blessing. But then in 2006, um, uh, Pastor Ron Lester called me, asked me to come to Tucson. And because of, there was a church over here on mission, you guys had been there. And um, where I met some of you there. And uh, we held revival from 2006 to 2014. And then because of various reasons, the church imploded. It folded or closed. I never want to see a church close. And, I've, and over the years, I've seen churches close, you know. But when that one closed, it had an emotional effect on me. It really had an emotional effect because there were so many prophetic words that were spoken over that church that were there in the atmosphere. That Because, you know, prophetic words are conditional. They are conditional you know, if, I, if I'm not honest, you know, like as Michael said, if I'm not honest, as Prophet Michael said, guess what? The prophetic words are not going to come to pass. And that's what we call duplicity, you know. And uh, there were pro there's prophetic words out in the atmosphere spoken over that house. And then in 2021, when I was in West Virginia, in Morgantown, West Virginia, I felt the lo Lord say, go back to, go back to Tucson. And protect those prophecies. But I knew that I couldn't protect the prophecies without help. I couldn't do it alone. I can't do I can do nothing alone. I can't I can't do it without God and I can't do it without people. And I can't do it with my busy schedule. I can't do it with traveling all over the world. I can't do it. I needed, to, I, I needed help. I needed laborers to protect those prophecies. And in January of 2024, this year, God, God sent Rob Lester into this room. He had sent his parents earlier, sent him in, and I knew why, to protect the prophecies. And on October, set, uh, October 2nd, just a few weeks ago, we ordained him along with, along with the Costas because I knew that he was going to be an instrument to help us protect the prophetic words spoken over the city of Tucson. Would you, would you give Pastor Rob Lester a hand as he comes?
title of this message is, What If? <laughs> we are but God, but what if? <laughs> All right, give me a minute. Give me a minute. Because I'm getting ready to talk about the anointing. <laughs> give me a minute. <laughs> Ruach, to be specific. The Spirit of God, the wind. Um, so, <laughs> you know, I was sitting, sitting over here, and I'm, I'm like, I got, got notes, I've got all this stuff, but I'm listening to the messages. I'm like, all right, there's, there's no reason to, to speak what I've got this, what is in my tablet right now. I might go back to it, but I doubt it. But... In 1995, I had, I had an encounter with God. Went to a men's retreat. I was getting ready to get out of the Army. Didn't know what I was going to do. Didn't know, you know, any of that. I wasn't even going to go to, the, to the, the retreat. It was 20 bucks at that time. That's a lot of money. <laughs> but <laughs> I didn't have the money. My pastor's like, Come on, I'll take you. We'll go. And the speaker at that at that conference was Alton Garrison. Great man of God. Great man of God. Can play the piano like nobody's business. And at that meeting, I told God, I said, you know what? I'll go where you want me to go. I'll do what you want me to do. And I'll just... We'll, We'll do it. We'll go. And so, you know, God led us um, to Tulsa um, where I started working on airplanes and stuff. But I really, I started getting into the ministry. I started, um, did the Berean courses. I did all that. I got my cert certified ministers li and my license and all of that. But the church that we were in was a prophetic church. You know, our pastor was a prophet. You know, that's, that's, I, I mean, I was around the anointing. I was, even when I was growing up, our, our pastor in, in Dell City, where, where we were at, Dell Gentry was um, a prophet, man of God. And, and so I experienced that the whole, all the time, experienced it. But while I was in Tulsa, I was introduced kind of to, you know, the fivefold ministry. Um, you know, what does that look like? What is this? What is that? You know, and, and. But the problem is, it wasn't implemented. And, you know, I, I always wondered about that. And so, you know, fast forward to, you know, I was in, I was youth pastor and stuff in, in Tulsa and un served under um, some mighty men. But then I went out to California to, to be with my dad, to be his youth pastor. And... You know, at that time, you know, God had really birthed something into in me at that time about the fivefold ministry and about how it needed to operate in the church and how it was doing this and doing that. You know, I, I had looked, I was, I mean, I was researching, you know, other churches, how, how to grow a church, you know, and I, I came across G12 at that back in the day, you know, and I was like, okay, how can, you know, all this, all this, all this, and then... You know, in 2006, we moved to moved to Cal moved to Arizona because I had I had to deal God had to deal with some stuff in, in my life, you know, because of you know my army career and all that stuff. But still, in the back of my mind was you know fivefold ministry Acts two. Me and my wife we we would always talk about it. You know, what would be the ideal church? What would be the church that we would we would go to? What would be the how, you know, what is the, you know, what is it? Because we were tired of doing church the way that church was being done. And so, you know, when I woke up this morning, this, this, because <laughs> Prophet, Prophet John just asked me yesterday if I wanted to, if I wanted to preach. And I said, yeah, okay, yeah, sure. And so I, I didn't, I was like, okay, God, what do you want me to do? You know, what do you want me to preach on? 
you know, this message is really based on Isaiah 61. It's what the conference is, is based on. And, uh, but anyway, and I woke up with this thought of what if, what if, what if, what if? And I kept asking myself, okay, God, well, what if we had started a church back in the day, you know? What if we had, you know, did a five-fold ministry church? What if we had done an Acts 2 church? What if we had done this? What if we had done that, you know? And, and in my mind, I'm like, okay, then what if Elijah didn't, didn't do what he did? What if Elisha didn't pick up the mantle from Elijah? What if Noah didn't build the ark? What if we didn't, didn't get on our knees and pray, you know, where it says, you know, you know, you gotta come before God and just pray. What if? What if those things didn't happen? And so I'm, I'm like, okay, God. So, so what if? In 2021, when when Prophet John and Meliana were gonna gonna start the church, I was the first person that Prophet John called. I didn't pick up the phone. I didn't. I didn't call him back. But what if I had? You know, we talked about this when we was in Africa. You know, we, what if? He was like, we wouldn't be where we're at. And I was like, I know, you're right, because I wasn't ready. God wasn't ready. I don't think you guys are ready either, because we got to go through some stuff. God puts us to a test to see if we're going to last, to see if we're going to make it, see if we're going to do this stuff, you know? And, you know, and hearing the stories, you know, about, yeah, I was ready to quit. I was ready to do this. I resigned how many times, you know? <laughs> you, and I'm like, I was like, okay, wel welcome to ministry and being a pastor of a church. I said, you know, it's like, yeah, what if? What if you guys would have quit? What if you guys wouldn't have met me? See, I've known these guys since 2006. We went to the same church. And I started started training, training, teaching them in, in the same Bible courses, the same stuff. And then we we left, you know. I mean, me and Robert, he, Robert texted me every once in a while, but, you know, it wasn't it's like, no, nah, I ain't going back to church. What if? What if I wouldn't have been at that church? What if I wouldn't have gone through the stuff that I went through? What if you don't go, don't go through the stuff that you're going through? What if? Because God puts those things to the test. And why does he do that? So that we, he sustains us. Because that sustains us to keep going forward. What if? What if? What if? I mean, you guys don't know how proud I am of these guys. You know, when I see them up here preaching and I see them up here, you know, doing what they do and stuff, I just, I, you know, it's like I just don't sit over there and just cry because, you know, it's like, you know, I mean, that's, that's what, that's what I, I, I know where you came from. <laughs> I know where you came from, you know, and, and while, while Veronica was preaching, I was like, man, I got to follow that. I mean, God is awesome, but what if, what if I hadn't gone through the stuff that I've gone through? What if I had picked up the phone? What if I had not gone through the stuff that I went through to get to this point? Last year, I, I took a, a medical retirement from the VA because I couldn't couldn't do it and I believe it was because God was like all right fine if you're gonna if you're not gonna do what I want you to do I'm gonna take you down a notch or two you know and, and you could say oh God wouldn't do that well <laughs> think about it you know God God's God. God can do whatever he wants. Yeah. What if he hadn't done that? You know, 
I spent all last year just really trying to find my purpose, trying to find what, I, what God wanted, wanted me to do, even though I didn't realize that's what I was trying to do. But what if? What if? Because if I hadn't, I wouldn't be here. What if I had told my dad, no, I'm not going to take you to church? Because that's the only reason I came to church that day was because he needed a ride. My mom was out of town. And I was tired of them asking everybody else if I would take them or if somebody would take them to church. But what if I hadn't? What if I wouldn't have met you guys in, back in the day? What if? What if? What if I wouldn't have got to go to Africa with you? What if? Because I was tell, telling Prof, I mean, we, we spent a lot of time together talking, a lot. I told him, I was like, you know what? Everything that, that we are seeing here is stuff that God had birthed back in me back in the day. We talked about fivefold ministry. We talked about the Acts 2. We talked about G12. We talked about mentorship. We talked about this. We talked about this. But what if I had tried it back in the day? Like Veronica preached about those old wineskins. Because in the old wineskins, that model does not fit. That model does not fit. But you know what? This church is built on new wineskins. God is fixing to burst something in this church that is that is going to be just there, there's not a model for I mean we, we're create we're creating the model we're creating the model because we this church cannot just live on just one pastor it's got to have a pastor a teacher an evangelist a prophet an apostle it's got to have all five in order to operate. Because if I just operate as, as a pastor, that church is not going to grow. i got to have an evangelist. Got to have an evangelist. <laughs> i got to have them. i got to have them. i got to have them. Got to have a prophet. we got to have the apostle. we got to have the fivefold. Because, you know, it says, says, it says, the spirit of the Lord God came upon me. That's Isaiah 61, okay? But let's fast forward to when Jesus was walking. And let's look at Luke. <laughs> and Jesus says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Hmm. Because he has anointed me. Well, it says the same thing in Isaiah 61. So what happened back in the day, the spirit of God is alive and well in the New Testament church as well. And we're in the New Testament church. We are an Acts 2 church. We are a prophetic church. We are a five-fold ministry church that is going to grow, that's going to transform this whole area and this whole, whole city, and we're going to plant even more churches in 10. And it's not just going to be in the United States. They're going to be around the world. When, when me and Prophet John stood on that stage and, and they they were talking about the tents and talking about tent, we looked at each other and was like, you know, it's like it was a prophetic word for me. That whole trip was a prophetic word of confirmation that I am where I am supposed to be and doing what I'm supposed to be doing. But what if? But what if I didn't? And you may be going, saying, you know, what if I didn't come to this conference today? What if, I, what if I just stayed home? What if? I was coming, coming in with, with Mark, my son, and, and I was telling him a little bit. You know, I was like, what if? And he's like, why not? <laughs> and you put, you put that in there. Why not me? Why not you, Larry? Why not you, Ricky? Why not you, Emily? Why not? Why not? Put your name in that. Why not? 
take the what if out and say, why not? Why not, Mark? Why not? Ruach, the breath of God, the anointing. Why not me? Why not? Why not? Why not the citadel? Why not South Tucson? Why not the whole city of Tucson? Why not the north, south, east, and west? Why not? Why not? Why not? Because God, God has brought each and every one of us here for a reason and for a purpose. There are still people that aren't here yet. My prophet Michael said, there's, gonna, there's more churches. And, and, and it's not going to be a long process. We are, we are on an accelerated path. We are on an accelerated path because why not, Citadel? Why not? Why not, Robert? Why not, Veronica? Why not, Nimsy? Why not, Charlie? Why not? Why not, you guys? I mean, you guys, God brought you here for, for such a time as this to deliver that confirming word confirming word I mean yeah I see it I've seen it for a while <laughs> we've seen it for a while but why not why not us people say in South Tucson why South Tucson <laughs> why not yeah why not what if <laughs> what if we didn't come to South Tucson why not? I'm here. We are here. I keep telling people when they come up to me, it's like all the leaders, I'm like, get ready. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready, get ready, get ready. We got a whole high school next door. 1,500 kids, 1,700 kids. Imagine. Imagine. <laughs> you guys don't. You know, you, 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 sitting in a church of 3,000, 3,500 kids that are under the age of 30, yeah. worshiping God. <laughs> why not? God, why, why, not? not? Yeah. why not? Yeah. Why not? Why not us? So when you're when you're discouraged, when you, you you're like, I don't know if I can do this or not. I don't know if, if this is me. I don't know if this is this. I don't know if this is that. Just ask yourself, why not? Why not, God? Why not? Okay, I, I'm here. Why not? Let's do it. And that's when you come in agreement with Him. You know, when you're in the flow with God, why not? Because if you're in that flow, yeah, you might get a little tested. You might hit a little speed bump. But you know what? That's so that you can sustain and so that you can keep going. Because when you pass that test, then you can look back and say, okay, I, I know where I came from. But you know what? I know where I'm going. Because why not? Why not me? Why can't I do it? Why, why not? You know? Why not? So I know, you know, this is a little, I thought I'd preach a little short because, you know, it's past time. I told, I told Prophet John, I was like, I'm last. I can go as long as I want, but I won't. I won't. But that's, that's my message this morning. So let's all stand. Let's all stand. Because I want you, I want you to really, really ask yourself, why not? You know, why not? Why not? Why not? Why not me? Why? Why can't I be a leader? Why can't I be a business owner? Why can't I own my own business? Why can't I? Because in order, 
Why not? We, we need business leaders, trust me, because the vision for this church is so big yes. that, yes. that we... we We're changing a culture. We're changing a generation. We're crossing those generational gaps. Because why not? Why not the Citadel? Why not? Why not? Why not? Look at where we came from. How's that going to happen? Why not? Why not us? Why not? Why not? Why not? Oh, man. Just use us. So just, just lift your hands right now. Heavenly Father, we just, we, just pray right, we just come to you right now. And we just declare, why not? Why not the citadel? Why not me? Why not? Use me today, Heavenly Father. Use me for your glory. Use this church to transform not only a city, but a state and a nation. And generations. That we become a multi-generational church. A multi-generational church. And not just a one, just not just a one pony show. <laughs> we, because we're gonna have five-fold ministry. Every, every office in operation. Every office. And this church will be, will be the model of other churches. Because, God, that is what you have declared. That is what you declared in this house. And, Lord, we are here. We are here. We are willing. We are your vessels. In your name. Amen. Amen. Come on and give God a shout of praise in the house. Yeah. Pastor Rob, I remember shortly after I started the church here, on, and I just want to let you guys know something personally. You've probably heard me say it. Maybe I, maybe I haven't, but I've, I've said it to a number of people. And I know I've said it to Pastor Steve and Lori. Starting this church is the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. And I, and I will tell you why. I will, I will tell you why. Because since 1996, Melian and I have been traveling all over the world, predominantly the United States. But since 2016, we've been going overseas a lot more. And uh, trying to lead a, a, a church and travel it, it is a lot, not just um, not just uh, physically, but emotionally and financially. The whole, the whole. Da and I remember it was it was probably early on. It was yeah, it was in twenty one. It was we started in June, at late May, early June of twenty one. And it was uh, late. And it was in the fall of twenty one. And a very successful pastor said to me, Prophet John, there's no way you can do both. That's, that's, what, that's what they said to me. I, I remember the conversation. I mean, and they were not trying to be, they, they were concerned about me physically. They were concerned about my, my health. They were concerned, and they were met, met, met well. They were concerned financially. They were concerned about me as a, as a minister. And I remember Rob telling the pastor, why not? That's exactly what I said. I said, why not? Why can't I do both? Why can't I do both? Come on, why can't I do both? Who says I can't? Who says I can't? Besides, nothing is impossible for them that believe. But you know what? I can't do it without you. I can't do it without your 100% participation. I'm going to ask this congregation to do me a favor. I'm going to ask you to do it for me. 
I could care less about accolades or platforms. Do it for Jesus. If you do it for me, I might let you down. If you do it for Jesus, he won't let you down. He'll never let me down. And, you know, I may make some mistakes. I, 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 I was trying to sell fireworks and got the church in debt. <laughs> Don't sell fireworks, son. <laughs> Almost split the church and got them in debt. <laughs> About killed, killed the whole church, you know. We out there in the sun. No, we won't do that again. But no, I, I realize what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to transform the churches across the earth. You know, I, I, and, and Rob was there with me. You know, John Bosman's an apostle. He's agreed to come here whenever I want him to come. I'm going to have him come sometime next year. And um, I asked him this question when we were in Africa. I said, I said, Dr. Bosman, is there any church in America that is operating in the fivefold ministry? How many that you go to? Zero. I pray that when next year he comes, um, that he says, John, there is one church I've been to that's operating in a fivefold ministry. And he says, it's this one, it's this one, it's this one, it's this one. And I'm determined to make that do all that I can because I want to honor God. I want to honor God. Jesus is the chief cornerstone of this church. He's the cornerstone of this church. But the church is built on the apostles and prophets. Not on administrators, not on teachers. Come on. And I refuse not to say that we don't need administrators or don't need teachers. And this church will be built on the apostolic and the prophetic. With Jesus being the chief cornerstone. According to Ephesians chapter 2 verse 20. And uh, I, I, I want to make sure as we, as we wrap up our, our, our afternoon that you come back tonight at 7 o'clock. I'll be preaching and I'll be shouting. I want you to bring, I want you, I may even run. I haven't ran to my church yet. I may run up and down, down, down a couple of times, at least once or twice. But I'm going to preach and then I'm going to prophesy. I want to make sure that you, now tomorrow, uh, tomorrow. We're going to have uh, Pastor Steve and I are going to share, and then we're going to begin to prophesy over everybody that's registered at the conference. And everybody that's registered, they're going to get a prophetic word. So I don't want anybody to feel ro they got, they're gonna, not going to get robbed. Everybody, we don't leave till 4 o'clock. Come on. And, and, and our flight, we leave. We actually flying together, I found out. I found out we're flying on the same flight to Vegas and Fresno. Come on, all the way to Fresno together. So. So, because um, I'm headed, headed over there to that area uh, on Sunday. So, you don't want to miss tonight. But here's what I want you to do. Put your hand on your heart right now. I want you to say this after me. Jesus, Jesus I thank you, I thank you that, this morning, that this morning I got fed. I got, fed. I got new wineskins. Wine Lord, Lord, I got a prophetic word. And Lord, Lord, what if? if. Lord Jesus, Jesus. seal Seal. what has been spoken spoken. in my heart heart. this afternoon. afternoon. Seal Seal. what's been prophesied prophesied. in this meeting, in these these services, services. so I can glorify you you. and bear fruit. And fruit that remains in the name of Jesus. Give God one more shout. Give God one more shout of victory. Hallelujah. 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 Here's what I want you, here's what I want you to do. I want you to tell three people. 
What if? What if? We'll see you tonight.